Ngayon mga sangkay ay kaanuan ni Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos ang pinakamatalino at pinakamagaling na naging presidente ng Pilipinas. Hinangaan po sa buong mundo, sinaluduhan ng maraming Pilipino. Nag-iisang Pangulo mga sangkay na napakagaling magsalita at sa bawat speech niya makikita nyo na hindi po gumagamit ng papel na titingnan niya. Puso sa puso ang kanyang sinasabi. Si Pangulong Marcos ay isinilang doon sa sarap Ilocos Norte. Noong September 11, 1917. At kung buhay pa po siya ngayon mga sangkay, ang edad niya po ay nasa 104 na. Si Pangulong Marcos lang naman ang nagpayaman sa Pilipinas, nagdisiplina sa maraming Pilipino at nagpakilala sa lahi natin sa buong mundo. Maraming mga proyekto ngayon mga sangkay ang pinapakinabangan natin mga Pilipino na 60% sa mga project niya ay talaga nga namang nakikinabang pa rin po ang lahat. Ang mga leader ng mga bansa noon ay pumupunta kay Pangulong Marcos para humingi ng payo kung papaano po palaguin ang kanilang bansa. Dahil nga po sa brilliant mag-isip si Pangulong Marcos na sa sobrang brilliant niya ang Pilipinas po ay naging mayamang bansa sa panahon niya. At ayon po sa libro noong 1980s, Sibika at Kultura, isa sa mga libro na inabando na ng mga dilawan. Pagpasok ni Pangulong Marcos sa pagiging Pangulo ng bansa noong 1965, wala pong laman ang kaban ng bayan. Wala pong pera ang ating gobyerno noon. Ayon po yan sa libro na hindi manipulado. Dahil nga po ilang mga taong pa lang ang nakalilipas mula po nung mangyari ang ikalawang digmaan, pandaigdigan. Gumawa si Pang Pangulong Marcos na maraming mga programa na magpapalago po sa Pilipinas. Nagsitayuan ang mga estruktura na winasak noong ikalawang digmaan. Maraming project ang nagkalat sa buong kapuluan ng Pilipinas. At dito nagumpisa na lumago ang ating bayan. At ngayon mga sangkay, may papanuorin po tayong video. Isa po sa nakakabilib at napakaganda niyang speech doon sa Amerika. Na ngayon, sabay-sabay po natin tutunghayan ang brilliant leader na si Pangulong Marcos sa kanyang brilliant at kahangahangang pagsasalita sa harap ng mga Amerikano. Programs of Marcos were more faithful to the goals uh, of our Constitution. Napakatahimik, napakalinis ang kalye. Everyone was uh, behaved. Nung sinabi ni Marcos, sa ikaulat ng bayan, disiplina ang kailangan. Pinagtatawalan ko yan ng Marcos. Pero ngayon sinasabi ko, tama nga. Mr. President and Mrs. Reagan, distinguished guests, my friends, I uh, feel I must pay tribute to this elegant and fairy-like uh, party and dinner which has reminded me too much not only of home but of some dreamland at home. A tribute to uh, the uh, taste and sense of beauty to uh, perhaps primarily not only to President Reagan but Mrs. Reagan for uh, this lovely party which I shall always remember as the Firefly Party in the White House. You do us great honor with this dinner. Allow me to extend the gratitude of 50 million people on the Republic of the Philippines, Mrs. Marcos and myself, for this hospitality and this generosity. Certainly, we will be unable to reciprocate this um, beautiful event. You even had the songs all prepared, including a Philippine song. That's a favorite of the First Lady of the Philippines. Dahil Sayo, which means because of you. Because of you I love, because of you I live, and because of you I am what I am. 
And then uh, you had the other theme song, which was a favorite of both President Reagan and the other president. I understand. Uh, the theme song of Dr. Zivago, uh, which is a long story, of course, and which I won't talk about. It happens to be one of our theme songs because it was sung in one of what was what threatened to be a tragedy, but which did not. And that's why we remember it. Tonight, the um, Philippines once again is obligated to you, Mr. President, for your kind and uh, generous words. And the uh, periods of difficulty, and perhaps therefore it is not too rash to say that it is proper to use the appellation friendship between the American and the Filipino. That friendship, that abiding friendship, we cherish and cherish deeply. And this is why as I come and stand once again on American uh, soil, Mr. President, I cannot but be candid. I would not be candid if I did not speak to of those misunderstandings and the adversities which we have faced together. For the world faces challenge and change. We are in a period of ferment. As one of your great writers has said, you have passed through a period of torment, constitutional crisis in the presidency, the trauma of Vietnam, and occasionally doubts about your own capability. Certainly as we look around in Asia, the countries of that part of the world are marked and uh, often there is fear that perhaps does not weary that America is firm and resolute actions but that it faces and confronts its problems squarely, fairly, justly. As I stand on American soil and I see the doubts rising in Asia, I see another phenomenon that clears my mind. It is the phenomenon of an American nation led by a new leadership earnestly exerting heroic efforts in order to stop the slide and the loss of prestige of American leadership throughout the world. Yes, Mr. President, out of the dark, out of the shadows of the decline in even respect for America and decline for her leadership. There is a rising and emerging a new America, not only in Asia, but perhaps throughout the world. The stakes are high, Mr. President. Let there be strength and greatness for the American nation, for only then 
can there be hope for us, the poorer nations, and let America reclaim her role, her historic place, and our historic relationship with the poorer nations of the world, the members of the third world, my world, for that is your rightful place, Mr. President. America, this strength and capability to reclaim her natural place and historic relationship with all the nations and with other nations reestablish order in our anxious, troubled world. We pray for this, we hope for this. Not only the big nations, but especially the small ones. And so may I ask you to rise and join me to a toast to the continued health and success of the President of the United States, the prosperity and the strength of the American people, and the friendship of the peoples of the United States and the Philippines. Wala pa rin po talagang katulad ang isang Ferdinand Marcos pagdating sa speech. Nag-iisa lang po talaga siya. Hindi po gumagamit ng script. At ewan ko kung nararamdaman niyo to. Na habang nagsasalita siya, naiimagine ko na ako ay nasa panahon din ng mga lolo at lola natin. Na napapaproud ako mga sangkay na nagkaroon ng isang Ferdinand Marcos na naging pangulo ng Pilipinas. Ang ikas po magsalita at ang brilliant mag-isip ng kanyang sasabihin. Nakita niyo naman mga sangkay yung mga Amerikano, di ba? Nakanganga habang nagsasalita ang ating lolo na si Marcos. Kaya nga sa lahat ng mga kabataan dyan, kung mayroon kayong binibiliban na politiko, malamang pagkatapos niyong mapanood ito, wala kayong ibang maiisip kundi ang galeng at nakaka-proud na nagkaroon tayo ng isang Ferdinand Marcos na naging isang supreme leader sa Pilipinas. Iba ang talino talaga ng isang Sang Marcos. Maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. This is me once again, Sam Kai Jan Jan. Hanggang sa muli, please like, comment, share, and subscribe at palagi nyo pong tatandaan that Jesus loves you. God bless.